I have a uh, KitchenAid Superba uh, range with the display no longer working. Uh, still functions, it can still turn it on and off, uh, but the display no longer works. Um, it started flickering about a month ago and now uh, we get no display at all. So we're going to take it apart today and see if we can figure out uh, what the problem is. So the model number for this range is YKERC507HS4. All right, I just uh, removed the uh, bottom drawer uh, just to reduce the weight so we can slide the, uh, the range out. Once the range is pulled out, we're just going to disconnect the power to avoid any shocks. All right, I suspect that the control panel is right behind the display here. I don't see any access from the back here without having to remove the entire uh, back plate. So I'm guessing that they probably have uh, a way to access it from the front here. Um, so I'm going to remove this fluorescent bulb here. Just twist it half a turn until the uh, ends line up there at the slot. I'm going to see two screws. So I'm going to remove these two screws and uh, see if I can pull this forward. All right, once those two screws are moved, it looks like this panel just lifts up and slides forward just like that. All right, just doing a uh, visual inspection of the board. I see some burning around this resistor here, some burning around the resistors here on the board. I'm just going to pull this ribbon cable out. A little bit of corrosion on these contacts here, so the first thing I'm going to do, I think, is just clean up the contacts on this ribbon cable, see if that helps. But if not, I might have to take this board out and inspect these uh, resistors here and these uh, resistors and that, that diode maybe over there. Make sure that those are all still good. So to clean some of the oxidation on these uh, contacts of the ribbon cable here, I'm just going to use some deoxid. It uh, removes oxidation and kind of uh, improves electronic connection. So I'm going to uh, spray a little bit of that on there and then wipe it down and see if we can get some of that removed and then give that a shot before I remove the board. Okay, so plugged it back in and cleaned the contacts on that ribbon cable and still no display. So it looks like we'll have to remove the control board and see if we can find any uh, burn capacitors or resistors that need uh, replacing. All right, I have my uh, multimeter set to continuity mode. I'm just gonna quickly test the fuses here. That one looks good. And so does that one. Okay, so now I'm just gonna disconnect these cables here, this one, these two, that one, this one, and one over here, so that we can uh, remove the control board. All right, once all the cables are removed, I also have to remove this uh, ribbon cable here. It looks like there's two screws on there, one in the corner here that we can remove to uh, slide the board out. Okay, the uh, two screws are removed from the control board. Now we just need to bend back these metal tabs here so that we can remove the board. There's one there, one back here, and one right there. All right, once those tabs are bent back, we can remove the board and slide it. Okay, so I have my multimeter set to continuity mode. I found a ground pin over here. So I'm just gonna test these capacitors. You wanna make sure that one side shorter to ground, but not both. So these, these capacitors look good. One short to ground, not the other side. Short to ground, not the other side. So those two capacitors look good. Okay, now we're gonna test the capacitors on the other side of the board. So we have Short to ground on one side, not on the other. Short to ground on one side, not on the other. Short to ground on one side, not on the other. That one's okay. That one's okay. That one's okay. That one's okay. All right, so just doing an inspection of the board here, I could see that this uh, capacitor is bulging at the top. So I suspect that it's bad. I also see some, you know, dried up electrolyte here on the back of the board. So 
What we're going to do is remove this cap and uh, replace it. It's a uh, thousand microfarads, 50 volts. So I'm just going to uh, remove these two points here using soldering iron and pull that one out and put a new one in. After a little more inspection, I found a broken solder joint on that pin right there. So I'm going to re-solder that pin as well. It looks like it's on the back of this uh, power connector here, so that might also cause some issues. So I'm going to re-solder that uh, joint right there. There's a couple other solder joints that don't look like they're too solid there, so I'm going to go and uh, kind of touch up a few places on the board, one right there as well, that look like they uh, might need to be resoldered. All right, we got our board back in place, so we're ready to uh, start the power and see if this fix works. All right, the power is back on, and it looks like this display is uh, is working again. There's no flickering, and the, the lights are nice and bright. So in this case, it looks like it was a bad capacitor and some uh, loose solder joints. So we were able to uh, repair this board without uh, having to replace it. So hopefully this uh, video is helpful for someone else out there that has a similar issue.